sanding the rub rails as well as sanding the decks. Now they're all prepped and ready for their final finish. The first step for that is going to be applying three coats of wood sealer. Once that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and I'll apply our final coats of varnish. <laughs> Well, I finally got the rest of my wood sealer and varnish delivered, but since it's been about a week since I did the first two coats of wood sealer, I need to sand the decks very lightly. So I'm going to use some 320 grit sandpaper and just rough them up a little bit along with the grain. And then we're going to go on and continue to apply a couple more coats of wood sealer and then get started on our six coats of varnish. <laughs> adding the last coat of wood sealer and it's cured so now I'm going to sand it very lightly with some 320 grit sandpaper and move on to adding our coats of varnish. here for 48 hours. Then I sanded the whole boat with some 320 grit sandpaper and wiped it down with denatured alcohol. Now that that's all dry, I'm going to go ahead and apply the final coat of varnish.
Now that I've completed the varnish work on the decks, it's time to permanently install these splash guards. To install the splash guards, I'm going to put a thin layer of bedding compound on any of the surfaces where the guards attach the deck. That's going to help make it a tight seal and keep any water out of those joints, helping to prevent rot. Once I get the bedding compound applied, I'll screw them in place. Got my piece, and I'm just going to spread a thin little layer along the bottom. You want just enough on there that it makes a good seal and that you get a little bit of squeeze out, but you don't need excess. Now, I'm going to hand start one of the screws to help it find its hole. And then set the other in place. Then I can fasten it down. The main difference between bedding compound and glue is that it never completely hardens. It remains slightly flexible so that when the wooden boat flexes, it still maintains a good seal. Where if you used a glue that sets up completely, it can crack and then you'll get leaks. I want to tighten down the screws nice and snug, but I want to make sure not to over tighten them and strip out the threads. Worst case scenario, you can always drill it out for the next larger size screw. That's nice and secure. Now I can use a scraper to clean up this excess. The squeeze out will clean up pretty easily. It'll harden up a little bit and then I can just scrape it off more. I'll just get the major stuff for now. It also wipes up very nicely with uh, rag and some solvent of choice. You just want to make sure not to leave the solvent on the varnish long enough to start removing any of your varnish work. Now this is just a dry rag. It doesn't have any solvent on it, but as you can see, it's cleaned up pretty well. We've got a nice tight seam here, and with that bedding compound in that seam, no water will ever be able to get in there and cause any rot. Now I can move on to the actual splash guards. As with the other piece, just a little dab of bedding compound. Now I just have to remember what length of screws I used on these. I'm not going to tighten these down all the way until I get all the screws started. That way I make sure I have everything lined up. That's it for installing the splash guards up on the foredeck. They turned out great and they're going to serve their purpose very well. Now I'm going to move on to some of the other tasks finishing the decks of the boat. I'm going to install the cover plates around the chain plates and I'm going to install the mounting point for the forestay. Then I'm going to move on to finishing up the paint and touching the paint up around the cockpit and that'll finish up pretty much the deck of the boat. From there it'll be on to making the sails and the mast. These are the chain plate covers. They're just some decorative stainless steel pieces that go around the chain plates. I'm going to install those with some number eight by three quarter rounded head uh, slotted screws. I'm just going to start this screw to help locate the plate while I drill the other holes. Then we'll come back and put in a little bedding compound and attach it permanently. Here's the bedding compound. There we go, just gotta clean up the squeeze out. I even managed to put the bedding compound on the right side this time. 
That saves a little bit of cleanup. One thing you can do with wood screws, if you've already threaded them into a hole once, the second time you can hand start them and you can feel them line up and start in the same threads instead of cutting a whole new set of threads, which can weaken the hole and lead to stripping out the threads. Of course, if you want them to look nice, make sure your screwdriver doesn't jump out of the slot and mar the head of the screw. There we go, that's the chain plate covers. On to the four stay attachment point. So this is the four stay attachment point. Nice little bit of stainless steel hardware from Racelite. Racelite's the company that the How to Build a Wooden Snipe book recommends for some of the deck hardware. And I have to say, I've been very happy. It's all handmade and their customer support's been great. And they seem to be pretty high quality parts and the prices are very reasonable. So this attachment point is gonna go up here. So what I need to do is measure out and decide exactly where it's gonna go. When I built the deck structure, I already put a doubling plate underneath here. So there's plenty of structural support to attach these screws into because this is going to carry quite amount of strain from the four stay up to the mast. The current snipe class rules say that the four stay fitting needs to be between 279 and 330 millimeters after the hull datum point, which is the front of the stem cap here. It says it needs to be no more than 45 millimeters above the shear line, which from my design of the boat, this deck level will be just fine for that. Then the max diameter of the four hole is six millimeters, which these are six millimeter holes. This aft one is a little bit larger. I'm not sure why Racelite made them that way, but uh, again, it's not gonna affect it. We'll be attaching the four stay to one of these holes. And measure back 279 to 330. So there's 27, 279. So there is our forward point. And 330 millimeters, that's 33 centimeters. There's the aft point. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that forward hole of this attachment point directly between those two measurements. That way I'm right in the middle of the class specs and we'll be good to go. This is gonna take some pretty beefy 10 by one and a half inch bronze screws or silicon bronze screws. So we'll get the drill set up to drill these attachment points. Got my number 10 taper drill all set up. Because this fitting already has countersinks in it, I've actually reversed the countersink on here and I'm just using it as a depth stop. That way I don't drill too deep and get too wide of a taper, which will reduce the thread holding capability of these screws. Try to keep this aligned with center and mark out the other two centers. That looks good. I'm going to intentionally drill these with a little bit of an angle to make sure I'm getting them into the beefiest part of the structure. Got my screws ready to go. Now just a little bit of bedding compound on the bottom and we'll attach it permanently in place. All right, so I clamped this flange in the vise and then put a pair of pliers on here and just bent it a little bit. And now you can see this sits on here nice and flat and it doesn't want to rock at all. So now it's time for the bedding compound and then we'll screw it down. All right, there's our film of bedding compound and now to attach it in place. There, that is rock solid. Just a little bit of cleanup work on this and around the chain plate covers. And that's it for the fittings up here on the foredeck, at least for now.
With the paint touch-up complete, the hull is essentially done, and that's going to finally allow me to move the boat out of the shop and onto its trailer. I'm going to cover it with an inexpensive exterior boat cover that I purchased online, and store it under the lean-to behind my shop to keep it out of the elements. With some space in the shop finally freed up, I can move on to building the mast and boom, and this winter I'm going to get the sail kit sewed together. Once I finish those two tasks, we can go ahead and move on to the final rigging of the boat and launch it on the water this spring. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. If you have any questions or comments, please list them down below. And if you want updates between these build videos, please follow me on Facebook or Instagram at MakeStuffNation. Thanks again for watching MakeStuffNation. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.